What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 52 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today I have for you guys our annual end of season live con where we will be playing in the various cup finals we've got to here in the domestic division. Today we've got Hound Dogs in the Senior League Cup and then we'll have St. Joseph's in the Rock Cup. So since the last episode, which was against St. Joseph's in the Senior League Cup, played an absolute ton of games and well as you can see here... We've parked the tank, and I say that because that's an achievement I got for going 10 games without conceding a goal. In total, we've actually now played 13 games without conceding. It's been a crazy run of form, something that I kind of hoped we'd have sooner in the year. Uh, but yeah, it's such a dominant season, fantastic performance. I'm going to really quickly breeze through these results, but I mean, we knew we'd won the league having beaten Gibraltar Lions just four games after the previous episode, and so it was kind of all wrapped up quite early this year, as it has been the last few. We did beat College Europa 4-0, good performance there, Lorenko grabbing a brace, Wanma grabbed a brace as we beat Hound Dogs who we will be taking on in the Senior League Cup Final. We beat Britannia 4-0, Britannia this year getting relegated, a team who, they've had a bit of a mixed bag really Britannia, there's been a few seasons where they've been right up there in the league, I mean in 2016 they actually finished third and they finished fourth just last year but this year just tumbled down the table and they have been relegated, I do believe. So that's a shame for them. We then beat Glasses United 2-0, Wanma and Putnam with the goals. Only 2-0, not amazingly convincing, but hey-ho, we got the job done. Similar kind of thing with Gibraltar Lions again. 2-0, Lorenko and Wanma grabbing the goals for us. We then took on Manchester 62 and won 5-0. We played Gibraltar Lions in the Rock Cup quarterfinal and beat them 3-0. Of course, we did also beat them in the... Uh, Senior League Cup 5-0, so we knocked them out of both cup competitions here. We then beat St. Joseph's, who we have in the second game of today's live com, 7-0 away from home. Ongeles, Wanma and Kuka with the goals for us. You'll notice that there's been some games here where I'm only playing with Wanma, some games where we're playing with two strikers. I'm kind of interchanging between the 4-2-3-1 and the 4-4-2 as I please. It's nice to kind of be able to mix things up, you know, try and fine-tune the tactics a little bit. That's something I've been trying to do in these games. The next game we had was against Hound Dogs. Good performance there. We then beat Europa Point in the Rock Cup semi-final. Kuka grabbing a brace and the Man of the Match award in that game. In fact, no, that's a lie. I think Lorenko got the Man of the Match. I'm going to check. I'm pretty sure it was Lorenko now I think about it. It was Lorenko. He actually got two assists and a goal, a 9.4 rating for him. The next games that we had all in the league, 4-0 against Lynx, 6-0 against Europa Point, and 2-0 against College Europa. So, yeah, pretty dominant there. Good stuff, I guess, to end the season on a high. In terms of what's been going on at the club, well, you can see, looking at the club history here, of course, we've now won the league for the sixth consecutive season. It's now at the end of our seventh season here, actually, at Gibraltar Apex. Time really has flown by. Of course, this year we've really added some strength to the squad having gone professional and, well, as a result, the league has just been simply put dominated. If we just look at it here, we went unbeaten, we had a 109 goal difference, positive, zero defeats, one draw, that 0-0 draw in the episode 50 live com against College Europa was really disappointing. But all in all... I mean, it's not a bad set of results. When you look at the top goal scorers, Juanma ended up with 23, Kuka with 22, and Lorenko with 16. In terms of the man of the matches, just looking here, Lorenko with 6, Kuka with 5, and actually Juanma with 5. A little bit odd to have 5 players up there. Looking at the average ratings, Lorenko topping the lot, an 8.5. Uh, eight average rating for him. George Putnam coming in in second in the league when it comes to average ratings. He is, unfortunately for us, suspended. I think that's for Europe. Oh, no, it is. It's for this cup final. That's a shame. So we're going to be without him. And actually, Putnam, 19 assists for the season. Not a bad return. Eric Angeles as well been uh, great with his assists this year. 15 assists and also 11 goals. Worth a, a kind of a mention for that. In terms of other average ratings here, Gary what a player. What a player. 17 years old, a product of our youth academy. Looks like a very good player. Obviously renewed his contract this year. You can see lots of clubs interested in him. Castilla interested. Valencia's second team interested. Bill Bow interested in him. It is worth noting that he is Basque. So, yeah, Bill Bow might, might want him quite a lot. But I'm hoping to keep hold of him because the 17-year-old is just such a great player for us. And uh, I'm delighted that he has kind of committed his future, at least short term, to the club. Anyway, we've had a look at this. Uh, you can see actually Ilicant, Hezus and Angeles. Been very, very naughty boys there. That's a little bit disappointing, particularly Angeles. For a midfielder to get four yellow cards is a little bit inexcusable. 
Anyway, if we just have a look at our team, as I mentioned, Putnam unfortunately suspended today. That is a bit of a shame. Uh, the actual team, just in terms of goals, Wanma led the way this season, 37 goals in 30 games. Kuka in second with 32 goals in 38 games. Lorenko, 20 goals in 35. Ben Connolly, 15 goals in 23 appearances, of which nine were on as a sub. Not a bad return by him. Uh, it's nice to have him kind of still in the side, Connolly, a player who I do want to keep it kind of active, I guess. And yeah, delighted to have him, you know, grabbing 15 goals for the year. Not a bad return considering he didn't actually play that many games. So anyway, that's a little bit about the squad. In terms of assists, Putnam leading the way, 29 assists in all competition. Ongeles with 19, Lorenko with 18, Wanma with 18, in fact no, 16, I can't read numbers. Kuka up there with 10. Also good to see Jay Marriott, who of course signed from LA Galaxy's second team in uh, January, has got 18 assists in 17 games. A really good kind of start to the club, I guess, for him. In terms of other stuff going on at the club, obviously I just mentioned Jay Marriott as a signing. When we won the league, of course, we got given budgets for the year. And I went and I splooged the budget on one player because I wanted to. I thought to myself, I want a striker. And then I found one. And his name, not John Cena, it was Mark Stewart. Here you are, 20 years old and he's only just turned 20. This guy, I mean, we've signed him for £2 million from Celtic, which is a club record fee and is the entirety of my transfer budget for this summer. But I think what we've got in this guy is an absolutely incredible player. Unfortunately for me, in his contract, he has got a £3 million release clause, which I really wish wasn't there, but we're going to kind of, you know, grit our teeth and hope that teams don't come in for him. But this guy, 20 years old, Scottish player, not playing often at Celtic at all, but he has some potential. Only just turned 20, amazing finishing at 18, some crazy, crazy pace and some nice stamina and natural fitness. Not the best in the air, he's still got 15 heading, but his jumping reach lets him down. Composure's good, off the ball of 9, a little bit lacking, but he has got 20 flair, which is something I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing a little bit of uh, from him up front working some magic for us. So delighted to get him to join us. You can see there was a, quite a few clubs interested, Ipswich are interested in him. So yeah, championship teams, I don't know if Swans are in the Premier League, they are actually, they were 9th last year, where did they finish this year? Swansea City, finishing 14th, but they wanted him, we managed to get our hands on him though, and he's coming in, not much of a wage rise either, I think it's only £4,000 a week I want to say we're paying for him. Uh, so yeah, really happy to get him in. Is it out with an injury at the moment? But he could be a big, big difference maker, particularly in Europe I hope, next year, the 20 year old uh, Scottish international. So that's what's been going on at the club. As I mentioned, it's been a kind of the dominant display you'd expect. Obviously, we're going to kick things off right now with the Gibraltarian Senior League Cup. A bit of a challenge, this one, but we're going to see what we can do. Jay Marriott carrying a little bit of a knock, so I'm not going to risk him. We're going to go with Alan Medi uh, Medina and Malloy in the centre-back positions. Romero in goal. We'll have Evans out on the right. He's got a haircut. He's changed his hair. The colour hasn't changed, but he has now kind of shaved it down the sides. Malloy, the South African, a player who has a £500 release clause, as you guys may remember. I signed him last episode. He's had a good start to his time at the club. Obviously, absolutely terrified we could lose him. I keep trying to get him to offer an, uh, a new contract to him, but he keeps kind of saying he's not interested, which is a shame. Alongside him, we've got Medina, 18-year-old centre-back. Can also play sweeper. I don't think we're ever going to play a sweeper, but we have an option there now. In the midfield, we're going to go with Alessio for this game. That is because Ongeles is out with an injury, and Braun is also out injured. And actually, Braun is out for a long time. Uh, he damaged his Achilles tendon. I believe he was out for three to four months, so he really has missed most of the football since Christmas, which has been a real, real shame. In terms of any other injuries, there hasn't been any other super long-term ones to my recollection. It does mean for this game that Alessio will be coming in with, with both our first and second choice left wingers out. Luis Alessio here, Gibraltarian international, 17 years old, one cap, one goal. I've not talked about Gibraltar in a little while. They are now 155th in the world rankings, so they are slowly climbing up. They got a draw, as you can see, against Bermuda, and they also beat San Marino twice in the World Cup qualifiers last year. So, actually, Gibraltar not doing that badly. They are slowly climbing through the kind of world rankings. They've not started dropping again yet, which is good. In the midfield, we go with Benu and, of course, Gary. Benu here, the... Um, or Benny Yu, I should say. Is it Benny Yu? It's Ben Yu, Jack. You were saying it, saying it right the first time. Be uh, Kundai here, very good player. 
8.19 average rating for the Zimbabwean. Obviously, we have Gary alongside him. Really good player, Gary. 17 years old, got potential. I'm hoping he can live up to that potential. He's a fan favourite. People love him. Consistent performer. You know, really can't complain too much about that. Out on the right, we have Gimo Lorenko the second, who has grabbed us goals and assists this year. Then up front, we're going to go with Kuka and Wanma going into today's game. So yeah, we'll see how we get on here. First cup final, and we really can't afford to take too much for granted here. As you guys will remember, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. I think it was the year before we lost both cup finals, and last year we lost one of the two. Can we win both this year? I feel like it's a, a bizarre kind of mental block that some of our players have. We seem to be able to dominate the league as we have this year going unbeaten. But something about these cup finals and our team just doesn't work. I mean... We've gone professional and the squad for today's game is vastly, vastly different to what it has been the last two times we've done these kind of end of season live comes to wrap up the year. But I'm hoping we can kind of put the demons to rest, get a few early goals, you know, win comfortably. And I, I can just enjoy this match from the sideline with a deck chair soaking in the early summer Gibraltarian sun. But anyway, we'll see how we get on here. Gary actually going out wide to Evans. This is from kickoff. Evans whips it in. Alessio back post. And nice to see a Gibraltarian player scoring there. Luis Alessio, first goal of the season for the 17-year-old. He made his immediate impact when he played for Gibraltar against Bermuda. Today he's made an immediate impact for us. Just a minute into the game, Evans, the right back, whips it in on his weaker peg. It's a nice ball to the back post. Questionable defending, but Alessio just lunges at the ball, makes contact, finds the ball in the back of the net. Fantastic goal by him. That is the early goal we were looking for. Can we get some more though? Kuka. Intercepted, but now if he's us up to Kuka, uses his pace, goes around the keeper, and he really, really, really should be finishing that one. That is an atrocious finish there by Kuka, the Canadian. I mean, that is one of the reasons why we have got a new striker coming in for £2 million. I must admit, in signing Stuart, I think his name's Stuart, I'm pretty sure. It's, if it's not Stuart, I'm sorry, Stuart, or whatever your name actually is. I believe his last name is Stuart. Made this new signing, don't even know his name. That's, that's how well he's scouted he is. But um, yeah, I've signed this new striker, Pacey, 18 finishing, which I absolutely love the look of. Has some potential in his 20. Um, there was perhaps part of me that was tempted to, you know, just sign a load of players on free like we did this year. But at the same time, I felt like, right, we have £2 million transfer budget. Let's spend the money. Let's spend it wisely. Let's try and get in a player who's going to make a difference for us next year and perhaps propel us towards Champions League group stages or at least some success in the Europa League group stage. And I think that's what we've got in Stuart. But anyway, we're on the attack here. Kuka back post makes amend for his previous miss. 33rd goal of the year. 2-0 up here against Hound Dogs. It's not looking good for them. It's a second goal that's come down this right-hand side. This time it's Lorenko whipping in the ball into the six-yard box. No one tracking Kuka. And it's just a tap-in at the back post. Keeper in no man's land. Good start to this game. More of the same, please. Three clear-cut chances, two goals. You know, it'd be nice to be more clinical than perhaps we have been, but we have another chance here. Evans, Lorenko, tries to whip it in. Can't beat the first man. Back post, headed away. Can we now collect the ball? We can't. Benu, now with Alessio. Gary, nice build-up play here. Goes out wide to Alessio again. Whips in the ball. One more, hits the post. And that was another real opportunity for him there. It's still 2-0, but we had a chance there. One more. Just couldn't quite squeeze the ball in. And Hound Dogs, well, they maintain the two-goal gap. And whilst it remains a two-goal gap, I'm not convinced. I'm not going to start prematurely celebrating. Um, football is a weird sport. And in these cup finals, we, we have some kind of curse. You know, if we could get a third now before half-time, brilliant. Kuka, can you work some magic? He takes on everyone. He gets tackled, but Malloy with it, the South African. Gary out wide with Evans. Can he whip in a ball? Already one assist. What a finish by Kuka. Fantastic goal. Evans with his second assist of the game. Kuka with his second goal of the game as well, I believe. And that was just a lovely, lovely goal. Evans whips it in. And then it's Kuka on the volley. Bang. Pick that out. Into the roof of the net. Lovely finish by him. Keeper, absolutely no chance. We go 3-0 up in this game. Going to tell the players they can be pleased with their efforts today. They actually look delighted, which is absolutely fantastic. We have had... Well... I guess the perfect first half, really. I mean, I'd love to win 6-0 now in the end, but to get 3-0 at half-time, I mean, I, I can sub off some players if I want. I can rest a few players. I'm going to take off uh, Malloy, I think. Alessio I could take off, although we don't really have an option. I'm going to bring in Manuel Cruz for uh, Benu, or Benu. I'll, I'll eventually get your name right, Benu. I'm sorry. 
I'm also going to bring on Connolly, I think, for Wanma. Wanma, he, he had one chance. He missed it. I'm not forgiving him. Ben Connolly going to come on. Going to take the captain's armband as well. Hopefully he can have an impact for us. It's nice when Button Connolly comes onto the pitch. And he's on the pitch now. Finds the ball for Lorenko. Really unselfishly laid off by Connolly. Lorenko had the goal at his mercy. But Kaffa with the save. And well, with 70 minutes left, we've had a disappointing second half here. And naturally, Hound Dogs with a chance. Crows, Gary gets it away. Can we break now? Kuka, options on ahead. Can't find the pass. And so now Plough's bringing the ball forward. For Hound Dogs, I mean, the game is probably won at this point, but I wanted more goals in the second half. I wanted us to do more with it and kind of run away with this performance. And instead, we've kind of taken our foot off the gas. Perhaps that is partially my fault for making three subs at once and kind of just rotating the team. But, I mean, we still have the better squad even with the subs on the pitch and we should be making it count. We might make it count here. Ben Connolly grabs a goal on off from the bench. His 150th career league goal, or career goal, I should say. For Gibraltar Apex, a nice way to mark it. 4 0, it's going to be here. And yeah, 150 goals for him. Not a bad return by any means. Pokes it in with that left foot as his. Keeper, no chance again. Another cross, another goal. And with, well, now five minutes left. It, it's game over. Can we get more? Can we get more? I mean, my voice is starting to go because I'm so excited. That is the only logical explanation. Cruz, Gary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, now I can talk normally again, kind of. Evans, options, whips it in. Kuka back post, gets his hat trick. It's 5-0. I said I wanted 6-0 in the second half. 5-0. It's not too shabby. It's been another great display here. Evans with another assist. I believe he got three assists this game, Evans, the right back. And I might not be wrong here. I believe he's assisted Kuka for his hat trick every single time. I mean, that is a, a partnership and a half right there. 5-0, there might even be time for a 6th. Why not? Why not Connolly? Options on ahead. The ref kind of gets in the way, but we eventually come away with it. Connolly goes out wide to Jesus. Can he whip in a ball? Jesus. No, he cannot. No, he cannot. Come on, Jesus. Even though your name is Jesus. Go go on. Gary. Can he pass it? He can. Lorenko on the overlap, Evans. Kook is in the middle again. So is Connolly. Intercepted there by the defender. And now actually Hound Dog's coming forward with, forward with the ball. This is this is nervous. We don't want to concede here. Not like this. Victor, bring the ball forward for them. Someone mark him. Someone could put in a tackle. Jackson and Riles. Smith. They're going to score. They're not. They've missed a sitter. Hound Dog's with a chance to get a late, late consolation here with 55 seconds left on the clock. In the end, however, I mean, it's gone in our favour, hasn't it? Kuka. Lorenko, could we score again? I mean, it'd be nice, wouldn't it, with 40 seconds left, especially after they've just missed a chance. Lorenko whips it in, no one there to meet on the end of it, and I think that's going to be all she wrote for this game. Don't think the comeback's going to happen with 10 seconds left, so we have, well, we've won one of the two cup finals, perhaps the one that I'm not as fussed about. I, I want to win both cup competitions, but, I mean, I'd rather take the Rock Cup over the Gibraltarian Senior League Cup, but at the same time, not going to complain, a nice performance there. Good win. Kuka getting a hat-trick. Connolly getting a goal off the bench. Can't complain one little bit. We celebrate a famous quadruple right there. Great performance. We continue the Gibraltar Apex tradition. If we look at the past Senior League Cup winners, uh, yeah, we did choke twice in the last two finals. So we've actually reached here our fourth consecutive final in the competition. But that's, our only, that's only our second win. But it's a good win nevertheless. Squad payout of £9,000. They're going to be loving it. Ben Connolly getting the top goal scorer award. And uh, Putnam getting most assists as well, despite not playing in the final here today. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go forward to the Rock Cup. I'm going to skip uh, forward in time. You guys don't want to hear me ramble too much here. We're going to be taking on St. Joseph's, and hopefully we can end the season on a high. Okay, guys, so we are back for the second game here of this live con. We're taking on St. Joseph's. I noticed when I finished recording that there was, like, maybe half a centimeter like on the right hand side cut off my screen that also affected last episode so if you noticed it well done on noticing it because i didn't and uh yeah sorry for that the disadvantage of playing fm in windowed mode is between recordings if i'm not paying attention i can easily click on the edge of the kind of window uh, over here uh, especially when i'm clicking for icons and so it drags out and changes sides and that cocks up the recording software unfortunately however uh, going into today's game a few changes to let you know about Marriott coming into the squad at left back, the young American. We have Putnam back in the squad at right back. Uh, in the centre back positions, we go with Medina and Malloy. Midfield, we go with Benyu and Gary. 
left wing Leon O'Connor making his return to the side. It's nice to have you know a few Gibraltarian players make little cameos here and there. He's making one today. Centre attacking mid we go with Nicholas Mohamed who has signed a four year deal at the club. The Ghanaian joined us uh, on a six month deal at Christmas. It was a really short term deal because he didn't want to sign for any longer. He's had some time at the club. He's actually developed quite a lot in that time as well. And he's decided to commit his future to the club which is really really good stuff. Out on the right, we have Lorenko. They're up front for this game. We're going to go with Juan Mert to bring, begin the game, but we might change things as we go. We only have five players on the bench for this competition, but I kind of feel like I feel like Peachman should be there instead of Kuka. I feel like we want to give Jack, club legend, a chance if we can. So anyway, let's submit our team for today's game. As I said, looking for a good performance here. We won the last game convincingly. If we could have another similar performance today... That would be great. You know, if after 20 minutes we're 3-0 up, bring Peachman on. He gets a hat-trick. We win 11-0. That's the dream. That is what I'd love to see in this game, obviously. Football never really works out like that. There was a little bit that was going on uh, between this and the last episode. So just so you guys are aware, the relegation and promotion playoff took place in our division. The teams coming up to our tier next year are going to be Gibraltar Phoenix, who have been a yo-yo club for the last few years. And as well as them, uh, Lincoln Red Imps are finally back. They lost the last two playoff finals, uh, having finished second in the second division in the last two years. This year, they've gone one better. They actually won the playoff final, beating Manchester 62, who are going to be relegated. That is a surprise, and I'll tell you what else isn't a surprise. We're winning here. Nicholas Mohamed, first goal of the year, I think, for him. And he gets it there, the, the Ghanaian, with a lovely little finish, threaded through to him. Great interplay by the entire team, Gary to Wanma, peels off, creates space in behind, the attacker just dropping a little bit deeper, and Mohamed there to run into the space for the goal, 1-0 after a minute, could not ask for a better start. So yeah, Manchester 62, no longer in our division, a team who, well, have been a little bit of a rival for us for a few years, so it's sad to see them get relegated, hopefully they can bounce back. At the same time, however, it's nice to have Lincoln Red Imps back in the top flight. In real life, they are kind of the big boys of the entire division, in a kind of cruel twist of fate, a few years ago they got relegated and they've struggled to get back into the top flight since, but they are making their return. I believe they may have beaten us in the Rock Cup final. If it wasn't last year, it was the year before. But either way, 2-0 here. I said we, if we could be 3-0 up after 20 minutes or half an hour, that would be great. We're on our course to that. Gary here, out wide with Putnam, whips in the ball and then, well, it's Wanma, the Spaniard. There, left peg, places it into the open net. Makes it 2-0 here. 70% possession in our favour. We are dominating this game at the moment. But we want more. We want blood. If we get a third goal here, Peachman's coming on for Wanma. I don't care. I'm sorry, Wanma. I don't care if you were going to score a load of goals. Peachman is coming on to make a difference. Lorenko, he makes it 3-0. It's not offside. Let's bring on Jackie Peachman for her appearance. A little cameo here for the, the club legend. A player who's been at the club a number of years. He has scored a few goals this year in the odd cameos he's made. But today... Going to be making another one for us. It's worth noting that despite all the new players that we have signed to the club, I am still renewing contracts with some of the real background players. Players like um, Guerrero, for example. Players like Griffo. Uh, you know, players who have been at the club since the beginning. I'm keeping them at the club. Uh, and the reason I'm doing it, well, there's two reasons, really. Firstly, it's nice to have some Gibraltarian players kind of in the squad at all, albeit in the reserves. Secondly, they act as homegrown players and kind of developed in nation players. Uh, for, of course, the Champions League, which is something that is worth considering. It's also worth, I guess, noting that any player of the age of 18 or younger who signs for us and uh, plays for three years will be considered homegrown in the future because they will spend enough time at the club in order to kind of, I guess, fill the criteria there. So that's another nice little thing that's worth noting with a lot of the youngsters we've been signing in. Anyway, a nice goal here. Peachman involved in the build-up. Mohamed whips out wide. Leon O'Connor, not known for his ability in the air, but a great header there for him. Makes it 4-0 after 37 minutes. And while this, this is going quite well at the moment, if we could get one before half time, that would be great. We're not. 4-0, though, at the break. Cannot complain one little bit. We're on our course, and I think it's safe to say we are going to win here. Uh, another Rock Cup. It's not the first one we've won at the club. I believe it's the third or fourth now this year. But um, great performance to go with it as well. This has been a pretty convincing game. Uh, so far, I guess you could argue there's still time, I guess, for us to concede one or two and to get a little bit nervy. But it really shouldn't. This really has epitomised our season. And I guess for the most part, the majority of our performances as O'Connor lays off Peachman options in the middle. Gary's there. Gary gets a goal. He doesn't get many the centre mid. 
He gets one there though, his third goal of the season, our fifth goal of the game. I am going to turn off after this goal, uh, the goal highlights in 3D. I feel like we've seen enough of them now, but there. Uh, Peachman, lovely box, edge of the area, Gary on the volley, bang. Pick that out, that was a really nice finish there. Uh, I'm going to change it so that the highlights are shown in close. So for you 3D fans, you still get to watch the goals in 3D, you just won't get a replay just to speed things up a little bit here. Because it is 5-0. I mean, we're only in the 56th minute. There is time for more, and there might be more here. Peachman, what a goal by him on his left peg. Third goal of the season. Beats the keeper at his near post. But, I mean, I don't know if you can really blame the keeper there. He hit that so, so well. And, uh, yeah, 6-0 here. Going to make a few changes. Manuel Cruz, I'm going to bring him on for Kundai Benyu again. And I think we're also going to bring in Danny Evans. And I'm going to play him uh, at centre-back alongside Malloy in replacement of Medina. So yeah, using all three of our subs a little bit early, but I mean, this game's won now. Even if we get an injury, it's not going to be the end of the world. Good to end the season on a high, though, with these two pretty convincing wins. If we could get to 10, that would be nice. That is getting a little bit ambitious, though, now as it is the 75th minute. But we are on the attack. I guess a Peachman hat-trick is something to aim for. Mohamed, well, he might be aiming for his own hat-trick. That's his second goal of the game. He's already got at least one assist. Gets his second goal there as well. Makes it 7-0. And let's switch to overload. Let's just throw men forward and bombard the goal if we can. And, well, as predicted and as I suspected, we go to overload, suddenly stop creating chances. I still I still don't believe overload works. People tell me it works, and it might make your players more attacking. I don't feel like it ever makes me score more goals. If you've had success with overload, let me know in the comments, because I certainly haven't. I think that's going to be all she wrote for this game. It is indeed. Going to finish here 7-0. Good performance there. I'm uh, going to tell the players that I'm very pleased with the football we played. Good to win the Rock Cup. It's a competition that we have, well, cocked up in a few times in the past. If we look here, uh, we celebrate a famous quadruple. Uh, you can see we've actually won the Rock Cup four times in the last six years. And that's not too bad. But this is actually the first time we've won it back-to-back -back years. That's a little bit surprising, perhaps. But I'm hoping we can go on to win it a number of more years now. You can see we've been given £36,000 for playing in that game. Absolute ballers now. Uh, Mohamed got two goals and one assist as we kept count correctly. 9.5 average rating for him. All in all though, just a really, really good season here at uh, Gibraltar Apex. I mean, I can't really complain. We've done everything that was asked of us. In our first season going pro, you know, things have gone our way quite nicely. We've maintained a fairly healthy bank balance of £5.6 million. Pounds. Um, we, of course, raised just shy of £4 million pounds from playing in the Europa League, including the group kind of stage fee, as well as the fee at the end of the year for TV money. But yeah, all in all, really good stuff there. Hopefully I'll see you guys for next season. It's going to be a big year for us. I hope that we can really push for a Champions League group stage spot. We'll have to see if we can do that. Um, but yeah, that is going to wrap up everything from me, I guess, for today. If you have enjoyed the video, smash the like button. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will be joining you next time for the start of Season 8 here in Gibraltar.